I'm very happy to be here today and share some um, insights on yeah, how to measure and manage my impact basically from an organizational and uh, entrepreneurial and also individual point of view. No? And we have seen certain forms, how to measure impacts, how to get certified. And I strongly believe in the common good balance sheet because it's a really transparent, very honest uh, tool. that's also very comprehensive for all the stakeholders involved that need to make the effort uh, collaboratively, right? So I've come across this balance sheet a couple of years ago uh, after studying my PhD in economics. I got a bit frustrated with economics, with all the things going on in the world. Uh, so I decided to, to study permaculture and uh, do agriculture. And then I came across this balance sheet and I realized there's really different ways to do economics and to do business again. And that gave me purpose again. And since then, I'm passionate about uh, yeah, sharing insights on how to yeah, run a business differently, manage my impact differently. We are company companies, we have students. So let's go into the agenda. I'm actually, honestly speaking, this is a bit of a critical uh, viewpoint that I want to transmit too, because there's many tools out there. But still, if so many companies worldwide already having GRI standard applied and all these standards, which are great, why is the world looking how it is? So there's something behind the story that we're actually not seeing. No? So, so many politicians now having the SDGs on the agenda, companies having it on the agenda, they're communicating on it in so many annual reports, you see it everywhere. But then I'm really asking my question, why is the world still living how we're living and why is the world looking how we're looking? So what is wrong maybe with the tools we're using or what extra do we need? What maybe critical point of view we need a bit more to go a bit beyond uh, this and really be able to yeah, achieve sustainable development. So for me, uh, well, it's not a real quiz where we start with, it's just a little, uh, you can write in the chat ideas you have, and then we go quickly through the slides. Now I want to show you the risk of greenwashing and this in, combined, in combination with the SDGs, no? because many people communicate how well they're doing while sweeping under the rock many things that they're yet still doing. No? And this is a big danger, even for the most honest uh, people within the sustainability community and all the SARS, green startups, we see certifications. So there's still abuse of the term sustainability and that's what we have to be really aware of even more now since it's becoming a really mega trend. It is already uh, something we all have to worldwide focus on. So yeah, we really need to be able to identify uh, areas where we're still not doing the best so this is what this is a little bit about and then i would like to show you exactly this balance sheet that i was mentioning earlier how to uh well how is it made of what is it made of so and how can i use it actually to to steer my company or my organization towards achieving the sdgs or communicate my contribution in an honest way in a certifiable way transparent way I will give you some examples and some things will come up later again from the quiz, the examples we have, we'll examine at the end again, and maybe this will ring a bell for you. And this is how I want to conclude. So let's start with this little, um, not a quiz, but more or less a little bit interaction. If you want, you can now go into the chat and uh, ask me uh, or, or tell me what you see here. This is the stock uh, from Volkswagen company. And you saw, see here that in July, 2015, the stock market value broke down enormously and really uh, they have, haven't recuperated since. They are still struggling in a way. They nearly went bankrupt. They lost billions of uh, euros. So my question is, does anybody know what happened to Volkswagen in that specific year? Maybe just quick in the chat, maybe somebody knows. If not, I can quickly also clarify. Let me see if somebody has an idea. In any case, let me clear up. Maybe this picture might ring a bell. So we had this big scandal of Volkswagen manipulating the data for the emission values of the diesels. And this led to lots of suits also in the United States. And this really, really damaged the reputation of Volkswagen. The whole brand before was seen as one of the most greenest uh, automotive companies like a role model when it comes to csr reporting and then this 
and this really damaged the company's image. No? So then you might re from there on, can they still be, uh, you know, from a customer point of view, be credible? And this is what they're really fighting on. And now you see, they're really trying to fight this image reputation damage also by saying by 2050, we want to be net zero. We're fully in line with the Green Deal. The whole uh, car fleet should become uh, electric. Now from this damn image damage, uh, now they get the turnover and they see, okay, uh, if, we, if we're not honest, if we're not fully sustainable or really being uh, doing the effort in the right correction, uh, we get sanctions. Oh, and this is something new these kind of things are more and more apparent the markets are more critical especially financial markets even the sdgs are even more important on the financial sector you see that this esg data now are out, out there uh, new databases on how to really govern uh, economic and social and environmental performance so this topic is becoming more and more uh, apparent also in the whole industry of finance and uh, yeah big corporations no? so let's see the next example let's see if anybody real uh, recognizes this share and knows what happens there please any guesses in the chat are completely fine no prejudice is taken um so you see here the, the stock of buyer and in 2016 first it went up this is where some news came up and then the stock markets first celebrated it was a merger or well a buyer and then you see the value drops rapidly down so my question maybe anybody knows but also for time's sake i will speed this up a little bit so what happened here buyer bought Monsanto. Yeah, and those of you that know monsanto <laughs> i don't know how you think about it but i'm coming from a sustainable agriculture community and of course for us monsanto is one of the biggest problems now what we see here uh, it's the product roundup the use of glyphosate and if you know that this glyphosate is supposed to be repressing herbs killing basically herbs and the problem when you see look at the picture it says even on the product itself it says kills so there's lots of scandals around this product there were lots of lawsuits in the united states and this is why then the stock broke down and this is when we see when we're not really aware of the conscious of the newer generations of what are the markets now looking at and you see here what happens when these big companies now merge and are posing also a risk to sustainable development. And consumers also will sanction. And here you see that even financial market sanctions. So this is, I wanted to just raise this up again because later on we'll examine those two companies again because we're talking about SDGs, the common good balance sheet, and how can we communicate, communicate and measure my impact uh, transparently and honestly. No? So this is more or less the starting point. We still have the mission clear in mind. Those are the goals we want to achieve. And as I mentioned earlier, it's on many agendas. It's even on many projects. You can uh, communicate. And many people have also critical mindset on the SDGs because of this greenwashing problematic, because you could just do business as usual, see where do I fit in in these SDGs and report on that. and pat my back i'm not saying that people are doing that but actually people are doing it so this is where we have to be really critical where is then the objective critical audit that really certifies that this is done uh, in an honest and really transparent and comprehensive way along the whole value chain where the whole impact of my organization has to be measured and this is where i would like to go at here you see now the question how to steer towards the SDGs, because in the end, we're talking also about cultural change in the company. We're talking about leadership. How do we line up the company's behavior, the employee's behavior towards achieving those goals? And because in the end, it's a group effort, it's a team effort. And if we don't do it together, we will fail. So it is about creating an ethical culture, building ethical values, within our business uh, uh, yeah, activities and making it yeah our mission to be more than just fulfilling legal standards uh, but we have to raise the moral standards so to say and becoming better corporate citizens this is what we talk about basically you know? so we need to create a value system and by this manage our organization by a value system so to provide cultural change 
yeah, we need to have a tool to steer, to monitor, and to avoid greenwashing. Something that I really wanted to stress out today. Huh? And this is where, for me, the coming good balance sheet comes into play. For me, this is a great tool. It's also fulfilling with the EU guidelines of non-financial reporting uh, standards. So this is fully uh, usable for certification and also from that perspective, complying with the standards. And so it can be completely be set in line with the ISO 26, although it's not certifiable, the GRIs that we just mentioned. So I always say, according to the public that you want to communicate to, no, you use either or tools. No? The GRI are great because they're comprehensive, worldwide recognized. The coming good balance sheet for me makes it quite visible what I'm doing. Not only good from a certification point of view, but also from a management point of view, from a point of view of having a tool at hand to implement cultural changes. Even for my staff, I use it in lots of in-company trainings to train staff so that we all have a common language, so that even my staff understands how to steer towards SDGs, towards the common good uh, of the economy. So this is a great tool from many, many perspectives. So what does this tool actually uh, is made up of? No? So here we see on the one hand, we see the stakeholders. No? We always talk about how important it is to have a stakeholder approach, stakeholder management, instead of the shareholder value no? of increasing the money of the shareholders. In sustainability, we want to increase the well-being of our stakeholders, people that we are affecting, you know, that are in touch with us. So here we see first, and this is probably one of the most important shareholders we will have and where we have lots of impact you now, we see the suppliers. Then we also look at the owner structure because it does make a difference whether my company maybe is employee-owned, family business, or multinational corporation that is just owned by hedge funds, for example. You know? Then we see, obviously, one of the most important stakeholders too, our employees, you know, my staff, my, our co-workers. We see the customers and other companies. We don't call them competitors because in the end, what are we competing for? Okay, market share. But now we have to also collaborate towards the SDGs. No? Otherwise, we will still see the same picture we're seeing right now. No? So for us, it's also important to change our language. So we call them other companies instead of calling them competitors. No? Changing this war language to a more collaborative language can also make a difference so then everybody and all companies are part of an ecosystem so one of our stakeholders is the whole community we're embedded in how are we affecting the well-being of our close community local community regional community and so on so this is what what is basically captured here and then this stakeholder group are observed through the lens, basically, you know, if you want to say so, through different values. I mentioned earlier, establishing a value system to drive cultural change. So here, this is a certain set of values now that is made up for this matrix. It has evolved through the last years. We had five first, now it's four. Those are uh, also values that can be found uh, quite wide consensus on now. Human dignity, who wouldn't agree on uh, dignant working conditions for everybody, right? So this is a quite value that could be finding a quite consensus everywhere globally. So here we look at the human dignity, solidarity, environmental sustainability, and transparency and co-determination. And again, just with one view, I see that sustainability is much more than circular economy. Than just sustainability, no ecological sustainability. Because if it was just ecological sustainability, it would be just this column here, this one pillar. But then we see transparency matters, co-determination matters, no? empowering people, deciding together maybe with my local community what am I able to do and what not. For example, is it possible to build a hotel in a nature reserve? Or is it decided by politicians and by the company or is the community able to say we want this or not and if yes can we please have a stake in this no so this makes a big difference so sustainability uh, can be and must be tackled from many angles and this is why i like this balance sheet so much because first it gives me a quite handy way to look at a really complex world no? because this is complex managing a company is complex managing the supply chain is comp uh, complex financial systems are complex 
Staff is complex. So all of this matters when we want to achieve SDGs and we want to achieve sustainability. So with this balance sheet, I can actually manage it quite handily. Behind that, you would have a manual, which is also free accessible. It's a common, uh, Creative Commons license, so everybody has free access to this tool. This is also for me a great plus. You don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to just get the knowledge and then be certified and then have a higher cost to implement it. At least you could um, start it on your own uh, and you can, of course, get guidance on it. No? So we will ask certain questions to ourselves that then lead us to also measuring certain things to create indicators and so on. So this is what all is behind these different parts. No? I see there's something in the chat. Let me check really quickly. Okay. Okay, let me go to the Q&As later and keep going to this, for this comment. Um, so this is how it would look like once it's certified. Also, this is a company that we look at later too. It's called Faudin, German company that creates outdoor uh, sport materials and wants to be the most circular and the most socially and uh, sustainable business, if you want to say so. No? So then also from the how to measure also for, for somebody to understand okay how well is this company performing no? because this is the idea how we should not only measure companies by their financial performance but also by their non-financial performance no? so this is a great way to say hey how are you performing non-financially no? although for me I did the term non-financially I don't really like I really like better to say what are you how are you performing regarding the common good now what, what is your contribution because on the one hand I can tell all the good things that I'm doing. I'm sponsoring a football club, I'm sponsoring donations, I'm doing this, I'm reducing my energy costs, and I'm doing all these great things which are completely important and we have to fight climate change, so we have to go net zero, okay. But we can do all of this and at the same time still do other things badly. You know? For example, I could be completely circular yet employ people from a prison. There's many prisons in the United States where people actually produce goods and services that are then sold. No? So in the end, uh, is this socially environmentally, is this then also socially uh, acceptable? Question mark. So uh, behind this balance sheet, there's also negative indicators that will also then be measured. And you can perform very well on the positive side, but you have even more points on the negative side. So if you really then, for example, the example earlier we had when you really um, hide information and causing scandals and manipulate information, you will get so many negative points on the, the certification that you would actually uh, get maybe a negative balance sheet. No? Keep this in mind um, because most CSR reportings don't do that. They point out and polish the nice things everybody's doing, but they don't uh, look deep enough to also see maybe what's going on still behind that. No? Like I said, we need really critical thinking. Through all the, the years, um, within also the common good uh, movement, basically, they have done the effort also to really synthesize the SDGs with the common good balance sheet. Here you see basically both things overlapping. No? So for example, we look at environmental sustainability up here. And you see, if you work on this, topic within the balance sheet which has lots of indicators behind it and certain questions that you would have to report on okay so when you improve your performance so to say on this environmental supply uh, sustainability within the supply chain because we're in the stakeholder group supply chain if you work on that aspect you would contribute to a couple of sdgs so this is already for me also a great way to then steer my operations again accordingly for example because I'm talking also about honesty. If you are doing this balance sheet and getting certified, then you can honestly communicate, hey, I'm contributing to this and this and this and this and this. You could even build a brand strategy around certain values and around maybe this branch of ecological sustainability and then make communication campaigns really catered also to your stakeholders in an honest and transparent way because it's also certified by that proven by an objective third party which doesn't have any interest in that company. Very important, no? Independent third party audits. So this is why this tool is great because on the one hand, it's comprehensive, it's audited, it's easy access, free. Plus, you can really 
um, manage it also in a great way, use it visually. So for me, this is really great to have in mind when we want to steer our organizations to the SDGs and to the common good economy, basically. Well, I just wanted to zoom into this specific aspect or topic within the balance sheet. Now we see it again, environmental sustainability, and we see what SDGs are related uh, directly to this area. So if you then would go into the manual and wanted to work on this aspect a bit deeper from the balance sheet point of view, you would first ask yourself the question, what do we know about the impacts in our supply chain, especially for the largest suppliers or those products and services that are associated with high environmental risks? So even if you were just running a coffee shop, you buy your coffee in bulk, uh, uh, let's say, amounts, you have already quite some supply chain behind you, which has high risk. If you don't buy the coffee organically and from a fair trade corporation, you know most likely that maybe they even use glyphosate, maybe they even exploit their employees, et cetera, et cetera. They damage the environment and so on. So you would say, well, this is my product. I'm in this sector, so this is the high risk and so on. Then you would have to provide data and so on. From an auditing, when you then want to be audited, uh, you would have to find evidences, of course, according to what you write then. So you can't just write and don't prove. No, so you always have to prove everything that you would state. And then also the next step would be, what is your participation within the supply chain? For example, how are you ensuring that your suppliers in turn are not exploiting their suppliers again. So like a double responsibility, if you want to say so. So it really goes deep into the uh, question of what are you responsible for? No? So then we have certain indicators that we can work on. For example, the share of products and services purchased that are ecologically superior alternatives or no, the share of products that are, have a disproportionate high environmental impact. So you would measure all kinds of things within your supply chain to really get a picture of how well you are performing, uh, in fact, within this field. No? And like I said, you're not just telling me the good side of the story. The balance sheet requires you to report on negative aspects. Ideally, you have zero. No, you have no nothing is going on here. You, you don't have anything. No points. Uh, um, that's the idea, to get no negative points, of course, within the balance sheet. But here, for example, we see the picture of agriculture, something that I'm really uh, passionate about. Now here we see monoculture, and we have soil degradation, most likely use of glyphosate and all kinds of pesticide, maybe even GMO seeds. We mentioned earlier Monsanto. I have a really strong problem with the GMO because it destroys biodiversity. We even see negative impacts on bees, etc. Then we have the lobbying against the uh, use of uh, endemic species, etc. So. If we are not aware of what I'm using in my supply chain, we are really supporting this kind of activity. And although I'm greatly reporting all the things I'm doing on the SDGs, I still can do all of the other things if it's not really certified and not measured correctly. Okay, so we also have other aspects within this balance sheet. One, for example, is the abuse of market power, which also wouldn't be reflected necessarily if you just write a nice CSR report. It doesn't really look at how much of the market do you own? How much of the suppliers do you really suppress? Do you maybe just have patents just to have them to block other people out, et cetera, et cetera. So relevant questions. How is my behavior on the market on the negative side? And if we don't look really there, it's just as if I'm just telling you a beautiful picture and I sweep everything else under the rug. So this is where I'm really critical. And please don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong in saying, Oh, but greenwashing, you said it's greenwashing, you're demonizing. No, I always, and this is why I also call my company Seeds for Sustainability. Everything we do is a seed. So I don't want to say, hey, stop doing the CSR if you still do the other stuff. No, S please keep doing the good, but please stop doing the bad. Be honest, be transparent. No? So this is basically the message, not one of pointing fingers, demonizing, but hey, we need to really have tools that permit us to be transparent for for all no? and for all things and don't look away and and, and call certain things like oh, this is our solution like electronic mobility for example not recognizing that maybe cars are the problem for example okay so maybe you remember exhibit number one and we had the company called buyer 
And if you go on their website, you actually see a really great section on the SDGs, detailed information, lots of good things they're doing. From that point of view, great, no? I would say thumbs up, good job. Um, but keep in mind, what are they doing? Are they also selling lots of pesticides? They're selling lots of herbicides. Now we just saw the case of Monsanto. So, and then there's a large pharma industry behind it. So many question marks from my point of view. And then specifically, we're talking about SDG number two and hunger, achieve food security, improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. We promote regenerative agriculture. Even the UN is saying the future of agriculture is small scale agriculture. If we want to feed the world, we need to improve uh, the soils. And also keep in mind, everybody's talking about zero hunger, zero food. But keep in mind that with what the United States and Europe throw away every year in food, there's data, it's even there's a documentary called We Feed the World. Um, or taste the waste, please have a look at that. Three times the world could be fed with what Europe and the United States throw away in food. So please don't tell me that we don't have the capacity to produce enough food to feed the world. That's just one thing. Second thing is if we use pesticides, if we use herbicides, if we destroy biodiversity, if we use GMOs, we can't achieve sustainable agriculture. We can't achieve sustainable food systems. So. Again, I'm really, really critical then on saying we do the good thing, but leave out many, many other things that are really critical. So then, remember exhibit number two, the German company again. I'm German, so by the way, so it's, I think it's fine when I'm talking about German companies in a critical way. Both actually are German, so please forgive me. We see again Volkswagen, and again, they're promoting we are sustainable, and as I mentioned earlier, they change their vision now to being a zero net fleet, electric mobility is on the front, etc. So this is really a big topic. Again, they are really um, focusing on the, the GRI, which I think is great. I'm not against GRI. I really recommend doing GRIs. But I really prefer the to also saying, please combine it with other measures and provide extra accountability proof things and uh, really provide the necessary data or even do the coming good balance sheet. Now to conclude, I would like to point out two favorite companies of mine. They are actually also like when you look at the points of the balance sheet, they're so-called champions of the coming good economy. The company again, VD. please check out their website and they have lots of information that they're doing the GRIs. They're with the Fairware Foundation, they have ISOs, they do the common group balance sheet. So they do a lot of things important on the SDGs, but they really, really push forward the topic of sustainability on all levels. They really put it on the employee hearts and the whole value chain. They want to pr produce circular materials. They're having joint research lab in Asia to really develop new fibers, etc. So this is for me a great example of, yeah, common good practice, not so common, but really good practice, but of the common good economy. So a bit of play of words here. Another great example, Zonentor, a company that is specialist for herbs and spices. Actually, it's a permaculture farm that is very profitable, but consciously moved outside a good infrastructure area to really develop an uh, underdeveloped rural area to say, let's save the rural, the rural life. And then they put work there and they're creating profits in uh, high profits, but at the same time, fairly distributed, fully ecological and really transparent. They're also doing the balance sheet. Really invite you to look at their website for the about us section has lots of information about how they do sustainability. They even have lots of pictures of all the different farmers they work with to really show people the importance of the supply chain of the dignity of how they treat the animals, of how they treat the soil, how they treat their customers, all the things that matters. And again, they use the common good balance sheet, they use it to report it, they use it to manage it. And for me, this is a great example of how we can actually use this tool to manage our impact. So now actually is the time for the questions. I see there's something in the chat, but maybe there's also more questions from you that you have. So now is the time before I then would like to conclude.
Okay, so the first question goes in, should we make it mandatory actually to achieve the SDGs or if you want to say so, you maybe use the common group balance sheet and report on your impact? I would say most definitely. And you see it's already coming in Europe, um, although it's only for the big companies, but now it's the, the CSR, the non-financial reporting guidelines. So all the bigger companies above 500 employees and a certain million uh, amount of revenue have to report their non-financial impact. Mostly all stock companies anyways, but also other big companies. So this already has some great impact because imagine Volkswagen now has to report their carbon footprint and they're working with all kinds of SME suppliers that never measured their carbon footprint before. But now Volkswagen tells them, hey, in order to be staying my supplier, I would like you to measure your footprint. Otherwise, I don't want you as my supplier anymore. And we have this spillover effect. No? So this is partially already happening. So we already have this economic uh, necessity and legal necessity. Another anecdote, I uh, have clients that work in the investment sector, although it's not 100% necessary and obligated to train your staff on sustainability and these kind of related topics. When they had their text audit, they were already asked, hey, by the way, I know it's, it's yet not obligatory, but what are you doing on sustainability? And if you didn't to take a course with us, for instance, they would have taken a note like, mm, let's see what they do next year, although it was mandatory yet, but it's going to come in many sectors. No? Also, when you think of public tenders, uh, they're also becoming more and more sustainable because they're putting in so-called social clausulas. And again, here in Europe, we have the Green Deal. This will shape the whole continent. So then public procurement, for example, will have to look at other variables than costs and benefits but also will have to look at your economic, uh, social and environmental performance. So it is partly already mandatory, but not enough. And I hope this answers the question.